In the Middle East, supporters of Sadri have staged an open-ended sitting inside the parliament building in opposition to the nomination of Mohammed Shia al-Sudani, Iraq's former minister of labor and social affairs, as a candidate for the country's prime minister position by the pro-Iran coordination framework. The supporters from across Iraq arrived in the parliament building every hour, joining thousands in their sitting inside the parliament. The parliament cafeteria, which was forbidden to enter except for members of the House of Representatives, has become a resting place for young and old protesters, as is the case in the Great Hall for holding parliamentary sessions. And to other stories, now, Kosovo's government has postponed for a month the implementation of new border rules that sparked tensions in the north of the country, where the ethnic Serbs blocked roads and unknown gunmen fired on police. Police closed two border crossings with Serbia on Sunday after the incident, during which no one was injured, and that's according to a police statement. Kosovo proclaimed independence from Serbia in 2008, but ethnic Serbs who make up the majority in the northern region do not recognize Pristina's authority. They remain politically loyal to Serbia, which still provides financial support. The latest tensions came after the government in Pristina said from today, people entering Kosovo with Serbian IDs would have to replace them with a temporary document during their stay in the country. In Myanmar, the military leadership has announced it will extend the state of emergency in the country by six months. The ruling state administration council first declared a state of emergency after Senior General Mi On Lin seized power in a coup in February 2021, deposing the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. The announcement comes after the council last month announced the execution of four anti-coup activists including a close ally of Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, drawing condemnation from rights groups and countries including the United States, Japan, and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. A spokesperson for activist group Justice for Myanmar said the extension lacks a legal basis.